my first uh, question today, if there are a new student in the audience. One, two, three, okay. Some basic, uh, I, I took one, uh, not lecture, but some introduction in the last week, but uh, some elementary information I repeat concerning my course. I am the lecturer, my name is Lajos Schratz, and uh, um, about me, in the last week I spoke about my uh, scientific career. Uh, I uh, took my university studies in the 80s. On that time, in Hungary, was a socialism. A socialism. It's a one-party system, probably you know what I mean. And uh, I tried to avoid any connection with the politician. Therefore, I specialized to economic history, environmental history, and social history. Therefore, I have these kind of the source of the courses uh, at the university. Uh, this course is basically economic history, but obviously I, speak, I will speak about uh, social and environmental problems similarly. Uh, good. Basically, I will speak about the formation of world economy system. The world economy, economy system, it's not a new invention, is this system based in Middle Ages, in the European Middle Ages. And somehow, in the process of unfolding of uh, a global economic system, somehow, uh, European civilization tried to standardize whole of global system according to European standards, European norms. It's not successful finally, but tried. Therefore, I will speak about the basic terms in the introductory part of my lecture. Uh, some information before the introduction, the scientific introduction, necessary to speak a little bit about the basic condition of perform this course. Fundamental information about the course. This is a lecture. A lecture, basically, one direction information flow. Uh, I speak and the student listen my, uh, my, my, uh, uh, my speech, but time by time, because this is a very boring. Uh, time by time, I try to open the discuss. I try to discuss some uh, interesting question with the, uh, with the um, uh, audience and the activity of the student I take into consideration. I have to declare on this place that each lecture, at the end of each lecture, I will read the list of participants. But uh, visiting on the lecture, not mandatory. It's possible nobody, uh, not nobody, somebody never participate in my lecture, but I take, like recently, uh, video records, I load up to my YouTube channel and very useful, why? Because if you uh, read and listen my lecture, the artificial intelligence, subtitle, make a subtitle. It's much easier to understand. I, and for me, realize my problem of, uh, of uh, my pronouncing problem. Come in. Good. Uh, Look at the fundamental information. This is a lecture. Uh, if somebody participates in the lecture quite regularly, I will take into consideration. I am able to make a lecture in wide lecture room, but I don't like it. Uh, therefore, I take into consideration. What mean they take into consideration? A regular participation, not enough passing of this course, but improve the chances. If somebody there is there, there, there uh, will between two grade, it's moving up uh, if somebody participated. But if somebody never participate, it's not a fault. Not a fault. It's start from zero point. Okay, uh, the value. It's a change uh, in different faculty between three and four credits. Very important to clarify, uh, because some, like some student uh, uh, told to me uh, after the registration of the grade uh, onto the Neptune electric, electric uh, su uh, surface, that it's, it's not enough, the number of credit. Necessary to clarify and agree because it's possible with help of uh, employees 
of uh, Office of uh, Education, uh, it's possible for foreign students change, but this is the rate of the change between three and four credits. Particip participation, as I mentioned, not mandatory, not mandatory. Uh, but, as I mentioned, I take into consideration. Good. Uh, recently, we are the period of uh, courses, uh, but at the end of the semester, we will arrive to the exam period. Uh, I, I am not able to forecast which form of the exam I, 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 I will be able uh, to perform. Two options are uh, paper based uh, test or course space based test. If uh, we will approach it to the exam period, uh, obviously, uh, it depends on the epidemic situation. Uh, one of the options we will perform. Uh, exam, written exam. Uh, exam period is uh, the middle, uh, the last third of the May until the beginning of July. Uh, I will ask uh, uh, two types of questions. The first one, definition. Definition is a simple question necessary to answer two, three, four question, uh, sentences. No more. And the second type of uh, questions uh, are, are short essays. It depends on the 10 or, or 15 sentences, enough for making a good answer. Uh, the list of expected questions I will load up to Cospace, of course, before three or two weeks before the exam period, because it's necessary to realize how many long and, and which is the size of the material which I, uh, I, I will speak in the lecture. Evaluation. Everybody will receive a personal evaluation. Uh, I, will, I, will, uh, I will write which was the strength and which, uh, which, is, and which was the weaknesses of, uh, of the answer. And there is, and there will a possibility repeating the question, repeating the exam more times, because my interest that the student learn this material. Therefore, if somebody would like to repeat five times, it's possible. It's possible, and I will record the best grade, of course, to the Neptune system. Good preparation to the exam. Regular participation on the course. Uh, it's it's taken into consideration if I mention. The second one, I will load up to the course space some supplements, some studies, some reading materials which help preparation to the exam. Uh, consultation, free form of consultation. Electrically, if somebody has a question, send me one email message. This is my uh, email address. This slide series I uh, will load up to the course page, therefore everybody uh, not necessary to write down, but able to uh, download from the course page. Electronically, uh, personally after the course, but uh, <laughs> probably I am very exhausted after the course, it's not the best uh, uh, consultant, uh, probably. And as consultation uh, date, uh, my office uh, located in the, in the middle of the corridor, in the first floor, over there. Okay, these are the basic uh, information concerning the courses. Uh, somebody, a question? Okay, good. Uh, we have to start, and uh, each course is... In the last week, I spoke about the philosophical background of, uh, of, uh, of uh, form of uh, cognition. Uh, I repeat uh, a shorter version, uh, uh, shortest uh, which possible. Uh, to my experiences, there are three forms of cognition of the verb. The first one, a scientific cognition, and the basic pillars of the scientific cognition are the facts. A facts. If somebody speaking about the science, repeat and cite to the facts. The facts which are the uh, nature of the facts. The facts in the physics or geography or history, facts, for example, the mention, which able verify or deny with help of uh, scientific methods. It's a fact. 
But uh, in the first view, the facts, it's very steady element of the cognition. It's not true, not true. Look at, for example, the, uh, the for example, uh, guidebook of secondary school or university, uh, university which published the university publisher 50 years ago. Majority of facts which printed, it's not true according to recent knowledges. Not true, not true. Therefore, the strength of rational cognition, it's very easy to learn. If somebody devotes enough time, it's able to learn. My information, which I speak, it's not a magic. It's very easy to learn, very to my impression, anyway. But no final cognition. The boundary of the science is moving. Look at, for example, biology. I live together with biologists in the student hostel. In the biology, for example, a scientific article use only other article which published five years before because so high the speed of development of biological uh, sciences that relevance of biological studies which older than five years expire, expire. Therefore, a scientific cognition is easy to passing, easy to learn, but no final cognition. Other way, a uh, transcendent a spiritual function, spiritual cognition, a uh, basic element, a uh, basic pillars of science, uh, uh, spiritual foundation, it's a God experience. If somebody meet personally with divine or angels or archangels or, or personally with the God. But which is the weakness? Look at, for example, from the Christian heritage, uh, a story of the soul uh, who transformed on the crossroads of Damascus to St. Paul before meeting with Jesus, he was a persecutor of Christian. He killed, personally, four martyrs of the early Christian church, four martyrs. And on the crossroads of Damascus, met personally with Jesus, lost the consciousness, lost the, lost the ability of, uh, of, uh, of uh, how the name looking, was lost the uh, looking at yeah. its, uh, its eyes uh, and uh, lost the consciousness for days. We are listening the story, but nobody lost the consciousness because for us only one story, one historical story, no more. But if somebody met with the divine uh, beings, angels, ar archangels, or personally with the God, it's a final cognition. St. Paul, after this uh, event, follow, like a missile, follow the project of formation of the church. Or look at the Muhammad, the story of the Muhammad. When met personally with Gabriel Archangel and turn other direction and never hesitate later, following the way of prophecy. Okay, on the case of Transcendental cognition, there is a final cognition, but not possible passing to other. In the same manner as received somebody. And the third one, a third uh, form of the cognition, uh, uh, cognition of the arts. The poets, the painters, the are artists, basically. Somehow, the strategy of the cognition uh, of artists, there is between a halfway between the spiritual and the racial, rational cognition. Because it's very uh, secret uh, form of, uh, uh, of uh, inspiration. Inspiration. Uh, for example, an uh, author or painter try to somehow manipulate a condition of the brain. For example, uh, the Hungarian student, okay, a very famous Hungarian student, uh, Adi Andre, it's a poet. He was a very, very, one of the greatest poets of Hungarian literature. 
and he tested, experimented, how able to write good poem. And he, his experiment was somehow between one liter and one and a half liter wine perform each day. He became finally alcoholist. But not each day was able, after drinking one liter of wine, write a good poem. Try, but to the poetry, no a scientific technology for that. Okay, why I speak this kind of different form of cognition? Because recently there is only one legitimate form of cognition. A rational cognition. If I, for example, start to speak about the, ah, yesterday I met personally with uh, Archangel Gabriel, probably nobody believe it. Why? Because recently it's, uh, uh, how to name, it's clean the verb from magic. Recently we are living on rational verb. But a rational strategy of cognition open only one slice of the verb, window one slice of the verb. And very important to, to realize, it's not whole of the verb, only one slice of the verb. Okay, but I have a license for only to the uh, rational cognition. In the frame of uh, my lecture, I will speak about the rational cognition, which is the first step of rational cognition necessary define the basic concept. We are necessary define the basic, the fundamental terms and concept. Necessary for history, uh, description of the history of uh, world economy system, necessary define the space. In the last week I spoke about yet, yeah, but for the new student uh, and the, for the video record, necessary to repeat the information concerning the space. The second one, the time, because a world economy system unfolded in time. And world economy system, the term, how we can able to describe the world economy system, and finally, necessary define the concept of Europe. Because concept of Europe in the historical past transformed more, sorry, more times. Look at the first, a space. If somebody would like to drink and eat, it's possible, because in the antiquity, in the antique heritage, uh, intellectual and the physical joy uh, enjoyed the parallel in the, in the same time. Recently, in the modern time, divided. And if somebody would like to follow the physical joy, go to the pub, <laughs> intellectual joy for lecture. But if somebody would like to eat and drink, it's, it's free. Okay, look at the space. If we are looking at uh, historical maps or historical guidebook, at least free information we can realize. Cheers. The first one, uh, distance, a real distance. If we are looking at the map, the historical map, uh, on the left, right, up and down corner, we can realize a scale, a scale. In the real landscape, how many meters, how many kilometers uh, demonstrate a map. The second one, a uh, landscape, the geomorphological surface. Look at, for example, uh, on the left part of the, of the slide, we can see one map about Czechia, Czech, Czech Republic, Bohemia, uh, in the historical term. Uh, in the green area, it's a valley or plain area, the gray area, it's a hilly area, and the brown area is a mount, mountain area. Therefore, if somebody looking a map, there is a special language of learning of map. For example, if somebody specialized to the electrical engineering, receive a map, for example, uh, about the, the city of Seged. And look at, for example, the network of electrical, 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 uh, uh, net, uh, the, the map of electrical network. This is one map, one map of, uh, of physical space. Here, basically, a historical map focuses to the landscape, the physical 
geographical landscape. And finally, if we open a historical guidebook, historical maps, uh, looking like, like a patchwork, different colors, uh, different countries. Look at, for example, this is a map of Germany here. And demonstrate well a tribal history, a tribal historical tradition of the German history, a Bavarian, a Saxon, a Prussian, a basically different heritage, basically different historical background, are and were. Look at the geography. Geography is a very special discipline. Why? Because the geography was a discipline of, of uh, discovery. A geographical discoveries. Therefore, a geography take to the same unit a physical geography, a natural science, and social geography, a social science. It's a quite a strange because a geography it's a unicorn. Why? Because the most important boundary which divide the disciplines are boundary between social and natural sciences. But because on the time of formation of the geography, for the traveler, necessary technologies are natural and the physical, natural and the social, uh, social information. Therefore, a geography somehow, a mule, you know which is the animal, came from the donkey and the horse. A mule kind of the, of the discipline. But the geography on the 19th century became and, and, and specialized to the spe spatial problem, a spatial problem, even geography, physical or social geography. Uh, one, a lot of uh, spatial theory made a ge by geographer, but look at the simplest version of the, of the geographical space theory, a, spheres, a spheric division of the space. The first one, a lithosphere, a rock surface of the, of the, of the, of the earth, of the globe. Uh, it's uh, 120, 150, 70 kilometer large. It's a surface. The second one, a pedosphere. This is the soil. Uh, in the last week I told it, therefore I, 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 I don't want to repeat the, the question, which is the with, which is the size of the pedosphere, a half meter, only half meter. Why so important? Because the survival of humankind depends on the size of the soil, because the agri agrarian activity based on the soil. Half meter only. It's very thin, very thin. Moreover, in the developed country like Hungary, like uh, Western majority of the country of Western Europe, United States, Australia, majority of soil under chemotherapy. Not a real soil, it's pushing, 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 pushing a huge quantity of chemical weapons, but without chemical chem chemotherapy of the soil, no bread for two million contemporaries, two million, million men. Recently, the estimated number of population, human population, eight million. For two million, no bread without chemotherapy. Therefore, judging the importance or good or bad decision of the, the strategy of agric agriculture, it's, it's a very, very heavy question, very, uh, not easy to answer this kind of question. Okay, lithosphere, the second one, pedosphere, hydrosphere, majority of surface covering by ocean, biosphere, each animal contain the flea to the human, uh, atmosphere, this is the atmospheric ocean, and uh, this is, sorry, this is the basic five sphere. It's a traditional or classical geographical sphere. But in the last decades, introduced two new forms of the sphere. The sixth one, anthroposphere. Anthroposphere, a uh, human sphere, mean uh, each, no, sorry, each, okay, each 
construction which made a human civilization. Like this building, like asphalted uh, uh, highways, everything which made by human is a part of anthroposphere. And the last one, a nosphere, sorry, a nosphere, an intellectual sphere of human activity, recently is identified to cyber, the cyberspace, the internet surface of communication. Okay, look at the next one, uh, ecological space. Ecological space, the most important, one of the most important term, a spatial term of ecology, uh, ecosystem. Look at one definition of ecosystem made by American Eugene Paul Adam in the middle of the, of, the, of the 20th century. Very simple, but very talented, very seminal definition. Okay, sorry. Uh, look at any unit that include uh, all of the uh, organism. Any unit is very important. Why? Because ecology, uh, ecological spatial theory analyze each ecosystem as identical construction. In the case of geography, it's much more hierarchized. Watch me. Look at, for example, uh, spatial theory. Uh, uh, how the name? It's a micro region, meso region, and macro region. Like a Matryosha doll, you know, this is a Russian construction. There is a small doll, larger, 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 larger. larger. A geography looking in whole hierarchized construction. But the ecology, very important uh, peculiarity of the ecology, it's analyzed identical construction, each ecosystem. Look at, for example, maybe ecosystem, whole of the earth, and maybe ecosystem, one puddle on the pavement, on the pavement. Each of them may be one any unit. Okay, jump back. Any unit that include of the, uh, all of the organism, for example, community, in a given area, given area, it's not important the size, maybe a puddle, maybe whole of the earth. Uh, interacting with the physical environment so that the flow of energy leads to the clarified, defined traffic structure, biotic diversity, and material cycle. For example, exchange of material between living and non living parts of the ecosystem within the system is an ecosystem. No. Good. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, uh, semester by semester, I reconstruct my slide series and I would like to insert one slide, but uh, uh, I forgot it. Therefore, look at the flow of energy. Look at the flow of energy. Last week I spoke about, sorry for the student who participated in possible, it's a boring, but repeating this is one of the most efficient strategy of the learning, much easier uh, to memorize. Okay, look at the flow of energy. If we are approaching to the problem of the flow of energy, the formation of the history, this is one good and interesting strategy. Probably you know, and uh, who participated in the last week, remember that uh, the first law of energy, that the quantity of energy on the universe steady, never grow or never lost, steady. No production of energy and no consumation of energy, only transformation, steady quantity of energy. If we are looking at human history on the Earth, each, not each, but 99% of energy came or come from sun. One person for volcano, but it's not important. Ninety-nine percent of energy came from sun. On the sun, uh, a source of uh, energy, a nuclear fusion, a transformation of hydrogen to helium. It's a thermonuclear fusion. A uh, solar radiation arrived to the surface of Earth. Approximately three million years ago appeared 
the first bacteria which was able to transform a thermal nuclear energy to chemical energy. Chemical energy. It's named photosynthesis. Probably you know in the elementary or secondary school one of the most important chapters of biological studies of photosynthesis. Not so high efficiency, only one person, one person of thermonuclear energy able to transform to chemical energy. And the chain of consumption based to chemical energy transformation and the uh, uh, carnivores like, for example, uh, wolves or lions, uh, omnivores like the human and the pigs, and uh, herbivores like, for example, a cow or, I don't know, a, uh, a cattle, not called cattle, uh, aid a chemical energy. And a chemical energy transformed to moving energy and the heating energy. And very important indicator of efficiency of transformation, how many percent of chemical energy able to transform to moving energy. The human is the champion. Human is the champion in the rivalry of transformation. Because a human able to transform 80%, 80 of chemical energy to the moving energy. Any other animal which domesticated domesticated in the uh, whole of the agrarian revolution, able to perform only 10%. 10%. Therefore, if we are looking at the using of energy in the civilization, traditional civilization, before industrial revolution, the human is the best option. Not by chance, from the early human history, from the uh, old, old, old dynasty, of, uh, of Egypt until the uh, French uh, kingdom on the time of, uh, of, uh, of Louis XIV. Technological and energetical based were the same. Uh, in old Egypt, in the antiquity and early modern history, the energy uh, scale, energy table, energy, energetical matrix of traditional society is 70%, 70% based on a muscle energy of humans and only 30% are based to domesticated animals, cattle, horse, and buffalo, and so and so, and the simple engine like windmill and the water mill. Only 30%, 30%. For example, this structure of energy production, one of the most important source of the slavery, a slavery. Why? Because countries were, and the regions like Russia, like Americas, low density of population, it's very important question, it's locate the primary producer to the same place. Not by chance, in the Russian history, one third of Russian peasant were holop. It's a Russian term, Russian word, holop. It's a slave. This is the same situation in Americas. Very low density of population. And I don't know the proportion, but it's possible was the similar. How solved the problem? How prohibited the slavery? And when prohibited the slavery? First time prohibited the slavery after the Napoleonian Wars uh, in the Peace Treaty of Vienna, 1815, at the beginning of the 19th century, sorry. Why? Because started industrial revolution and the differences and advantage of energetical advantage of the human expired because came the fossil fuels like coal and later uh, uh, other fuels and the gas and, and so and so and in the 19th, uh, 20th century the nuclear energy the nuclear plants not important so moderate differences and the last great fight 
in the case of slavery was the American Civil War. But to the end of 19th century, to the second phase of industrial revolution, uh, slavery became a marginal evil. And not for great, uh, great uh, uh, trial and great uh, uh, fight of the human right, no, for energetical, economic, finally, energetical and economic reason. It's not efficient working with slaves. Good. Uh, and look at the last one, the last uh, approach of the mental space. A mental space uh, is uh, somehow the projection of space in our brain. Uh, somebody made a mental map, yet, yeah, mental map. A making of mental map is very simple. Somebody received a white sheet and necessary to draw the memories about the space. For example, it's possible to make a mental map, I distribute one white sheet and draw your memories about Seged. Which buildings you you able to draw and remember the right location? It's not so easy, not so easy. Why? Because the brain, the memory, select. It's somebody not important, it's done. It's important because day by day necessary to visit. I hope that this place <laughs> for one part of the audience became a, a, a steady part of the mental map, but it's possible other, other, other students it's expired. Therefore, a mental map, it's a selection, a inform, spatial information according to importance. The first mental map made in Chicago, in the United States, by anthropologists and by uh, human geographers. And, uh, Everybody, a lot of people, not everybody, a lot of people receive white sheet and draw the memories about the space, the spatial construction of Chicago. And the great discovery of the first experiment was the majority, for example, the people who traveled day by day for decades from lodging to working place, no spatial memories. Only a selected spaces where necessary make decision. Turn right, turn left, and uh, change, for example, a uh, bus to uh, metro to, to tram, and no, no other information, no other information. This is the first one, selectivity. The second one, uh, no, no uh, uh, GPS uh, map there is in the brain. The second one, uh, emotion, emotion, because human, is emotional, emotional. And I remember, it's the last week I spoke the same example, uh, when travel to abroad in the socialist people, one party system, one kind of dictatorship, uh, prohibited, for example, bringing a book from one Western country to Hungary, prohibited. If somebody found on the boundary a prohibited book, it's received a fee, well, some high amount, or some cases close to the prison. But we try to smuggle because it's an intellectual, intellectual temptation. It's, a, it's, a, it's learning a, a real knowledge. It's, it's great, great temptation. But the consequence of that, recently we are living a European Union inside of the boundary of mastery, no boundary control, but my stomach is, ah, why? Because when I socialized, it was a dangerous operation, a dangerous operation. And my mental reaction, I wasn't able to override this reaction. For example, I travel from Germany to France, no reason, but my stomach is up. Otherwise, other way, in Chicago, in Chicago, Chicago, but founded by, by French, uh, Chicago uh, tested the emotional reaction with help of the photo. Made a lot of photo of different parts of the Chicago. And it was very interesting overlapping, distributed for, for children, a lot of photos. 
and uh, on, the on the back of the photos, the children who lived in, in, uh, in Chicago wrote his or her emotion and was one very interesting overlapping. A photo about a building with swimming pool. A middle class children wrote joy, happiness, an immigrant came from Mexico, Mexico, hate. Because look a swimming pool on other side of the fence, other side of the fence, very important emotion. Okay, this is a, a real world map published in Australia. It's not a mental map, but able to show a individual perspective of Australians. Because on the her part of the on the center part of the map, locate Australia. Because for Australia, the core area of the world, Australia, of course. But for us, for example, European, it's very strange because Europe located on the uh, left, uh, right corner. America in the left corner. Good. But look at one, this was the last slide in the last week and the, the new chapter will start for, for the student who participated in the uh, last week. A mental map of Paris. An American scholar made mental map of Paris. Stanley Milgram in the middle of the uh, uh, 70s. Not so large uh, uh, test of the, of the mental map. Less than 300 Parisian uh, inhabitants of Paris participated in this mental map. Received a white sheet and drew the most important buildings and, and geographical location. And look at the rank list of Paris mental map. The first one, Seine River. If somebody li uh, living in Paris, very, dif very difficult to avoid the Seine because it's crossed over the uh, uh, French capital. The second one, outskirts of Paris. Why? Because on the core area, on the downtown of the city, living the tourists and very rich people. And majority who participated in the experiment were uh, not so rich people and no tourists, a people who lived in the outskirts, Balieu, uh, as the French people named. The third one, uh, Etoile and Arc de Triomphe, which made by Napoleon uh, at the end of uh, Champs Elysees, the famous uh, walking street of Paris. Only uh, two thirds of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, participant of the mental map maker realized and was able to locate to the mental map. Uh, the fourth one, a Notre Dame, a small uh, medieval uh, church in the Ile de France, in the core area of Paris. And uh, the fifth one, uh, Tour Eiffel, which is the uh, gadget of uh, traditional symbol of, uh, of uh, Paris. But uh, probably you know that uh, um, the Tour Eiffel constructed to the World uh, Exposition in uh, uh, 18, uh, 1872. Uh, temporary. According to original project, it's constructed temporary, but so became so famous that uh, reconstructed more times, and recently is uh, a part of the of the of the landscape of uh, Paris. And the last one, Bois de Boulogne. Bois de Boulogne in the last week, it was a guess, but recently no reason. A Bois de Boulogne uh, is uh, a core area of prostitution. And very efficient information because in the marketing there is a uh, there is a category of uh, of uh, strength of information. Who are the consumer of the prostitution? Uh, male, uh, probably. Uh, statistical probability there are uh, behind this mention. And uh, half of the of the maker of uh, mental map it's a male, half uh, a female. Uh, therefore, from 50% male, 49.1% not only knew about the core area of prostitution, but was able to draw to the right place. Therefore, a marketing aspect, this is the most efficient information. Okay, close to the space. This is the different aspect of the space. Look at the time. Look at the time. 
uh, very difficult. There, there is a philosophical approach, uh, but uh, in the frame of this practical course, no reason to look uh, uh, basically a philosophical approach to the problem of the time. Look at the practical. Uh, how we can able to approach to the problem of the time in practical sense? Uh, which is the strategy, which is the, the background of uh, measuring of time? The first strategy of measuring of time are astronomical experiences. Astronomical experiences. Not by chance, recently and historically, there are and there were two types of calendar. A moon calendar, for example, Jews calendar is a moon calendar, to my last uh, memories and last, uh, uh, last memories, an uh, old uh, Muslim calendar is a moon calendar, uh, and a Christian calendar is a sun calendar. Therefore, it's two, two different uh, uh, astronomical trajectory. It's a two different length of the of the of the division of the time. Sun and moon calendar. These are the basic experiences. Uh, after the agrarian revolution, after the domestication of plants and animals, uh, improved and increased the importance of seasons, the vegetation periods. Therefore. After the agrarian revolution, as division of time appeared, the seasons and the milestone, the pillars of vegetation periods. After the appearance of uh, great religion, like for example Muslim Islam, like Christian, like Judaism, increased importance of liturgical hours. In the Muslim, uh, Muslim religion, for each follower of the Muslim religion, necessary five times prayer. In the Christian community, so many times, yeah, but because we are the Havi Christian, Havi Christian, is there is a free time for me and for the God and for the angel? It's possible to meet on the on the church, but in the past, in the Middle Ages, when majority of human no Havi Christian. In the Christian community, four times necessary to pray by day. Four times. Not so far, five or four. Because uh, for efficient, look at, you remember, two strategies of cognition. First one, traditional, uh, to, uh, to spiritual cognition, and the pray somehow, uh, methods and the technology of spiritual cognition. If somebody make a real prayer, step to other world. But the really, uh, rational cognition, step to the, for example, shops for buying something which is useful, which useful. Okay, liturgical hours, liturgical hours. This is the divide the time. Mechanical clocks. Uh, the first mechanical clocks constructed China or Korea. No final conclusion in this case, not in Europe. Majority of invention, invention invented in Asia, other corner of Eurasia, but Europe adopted each of them and improved. Look at, for example, gunpowder invented in China, but the firearms constructed in Europe. And uh, uh, magnetic, uh, uh, how the name is uh, uh, using in the sailing, uh, a magnetic... Uh, Campus. 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 Thanks. <laughs> Very late. <laughs> not, uh, the words not, don't come easy some situation. Okay. Invented by uh, chi in China. But, but when in China prohibited a sailing in the uh, 15th century, disappeared the knowledge is concerning the compass. And European tanks and constructing a global sailing system. Okay, uh, which device is used for, for measuring of time? Sundial. Sundial is very easy construction. It's a stick and with the scale. There are two weaknesses. 
on cloudy weather and during the night it's not usable. The second one, water clock. Two container and the water flow one to other. There is a scale. It's function on the cloudy weather and during the night, but very complicated. Uh, instance burner. Instance burner. Uh, somebody know the movie of Ipman? 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 Uh, he was uh, a master of uh, Bruce Lee. It's a kung fu master. No, nobody. Yeah. Okay, uh, but uh, some years ago, made three or four movie movies about Ip Man. Yeah. And in Hong Kong, there is a fun form of the uh, of the of the kung fu fight. Uh -huh. The masters jump to the table, start and fight, not fight, uh, it's a, uh, uh, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, how do you burn, uh, incense burner, and this was the timer of the fight. It's burned down, the incense burner, this is the turn of the, of the Kung Fu fight, and the winner who left on the, on the table. If both left on the burner, it's equal. Okay, and the candle, used in the monastery, a Christian monastery. For example, somebody, there is a perform a sin, receive a candle, it was a timer, and, uh, and have to pray and ask, uh, uh, forgive for the sin. A candle was a timer, similarly, in the Christian monastery. And finally, appeared the mechanical cross. It's true, the first mechanical cross constructed China or Korea, first time, but in Europe, to the high Middle Ages, adopted. It's possible, separately invented, it's no uh, evidence about them, but very interesting uh, peculiarity of the first generation of the mechanical clocks. Half of mechanical clocks turn right to left, half left to right. But in the 18th century, on the uh, century of enlightenment, which standardized everything, standardized the turning direction of the clocks. But very interesting, if somebody visit in Prague, capital of Czech Republic, uh, Josef of district, Josef of district, save some clock turn backward. And the tourist very surprised, it's two hours PM. And recently it's one hours PM. Turn back. No, at the scale is followed the traditional old version, but uh, uh, it's uh, it's saved like a historical uh, historical monuments, uh, 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 other version of the of the of the mechanical clocks. But in the 18th century, mo whole of uh, whole of the world standardized. Okay, but look at a historical concept, a historical concept of the time. But the, not but a historian who wrote a monograph in the 19th century used a time concept, a time concept. Old historical time concept, we can describe a linear, irreversible, and cumulative. How we can uh, understand the meaning of this term? Linear means, uh, imagine the 19th century historian, a human history, a one highway started from the early history, hunter-gatherers, antiquity, feudal world, and uh, capitalism. Each nation, each force, walking on the same highway to one direction. One nation sit down and waiting, other is run, but each nation's history follow the same linear strategy. First, second, irreversible, irreversible. The way out from the recent time, there is only to the direction of future. One way out, one exit. No possibility going back, no machinery of time and traveling back to the, for example, uh, antiquity or Roman Empire period. No, only one way to the direction, way out from the direction of future. And cumulative mean that, uh, uh, imagine a 19th century historian, a uh, history 
like a giant puzzle. Everybody played with the small pieces of the puzzle. But this kind of the puzzle, huge puzzle, is growing, growing. Because time by time, perform new human deeds. And the mission of the historian, taking a piece of human deeds and take to the right places, which increase. And finally, if quite uh, talented the historian, able to understand the meaning of human history, the picture of the human history. This was the whole concept about the time. Linear, follow the same trajectory. It's an irreversible, one way, one direction, one way out from the recent time. Uh, and uh, cumulative, because increase, increase, increase. The quantity of human needs. Very interesting, on the turn of 19th and 20th century appeared a new time concept. And very interesting, introduced by economists. Not a th theoretical economist, a practical economist. Why? Because in the 19th century, in consequence of industrial revolution and modernization, disappeared a lot of stock of exchange, a lot of bores and stock of exchange. And uh, probably you know the uh, majority of audience, I, I suppose, uh, uh, saw a movie of uh, Wolf of Wall Street. which is the most ambition of broker. Earn money, huge quantity of money. How possible? How possible? Earn huge quantity of money. One strategy, this is the uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. It's, it's a, a manipulation and, uh, and, uh, and uh, stealing. But there are legal version of the earn huge quantity of money, huge money. Forecast the future. If somebody able to forecast the future, which will happen, which paper rise, which down, and the good instant sell and buy, able to earn money. It's a great problem of the modern world, how we are able to forecast the future. In the magical world, there is a magician, for example, look at the Roman history. It's a Roman magician able to uh, make a forecast, for example, from the direction of flying of birds. Flying of birds. But the rational work, it functions in a basically different manner. Uh, two strategies of forecasting of future uh, introduced a rational cognition. The first one, a modeling. Modeling a situation. Modeling. Look at a very simple model. Uh, uh, you know, probably a uh, model of the simplest form of the model, uh, automat model, a co cock automat model. Take one coin, trrr, receive up one bottle of coke. It's very interesting. Look at one uh, uh, financial operation, take one coin and receive one. This is the simplest version of the, of the model. One, one, uh, one, one, one operation and one answer. But look at a little bit more complicated model. I am partly geographer. I studied history and geography. And look at a geographical model. Uh, feedback model, feedback model. Probably you know what means the feedback model. There is a, 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 uh, some impetus, some, some influence. And the model, it's uh, uh, increase the efficiency of the, of, the, of the influence or decrease. But look at the, uh, the model of uh, decrease, the uh, negative uh, feedback model. Uh, in the former time, I spoke about the uh, nuclear fusion on the sun. One reason of uh, global warming increase the intensity of solar radiation. This is the first impact. Increase the solar radiation. The consequence that probably you know from your geographical studies that the air, the atmosphere, warming up from the soil. From the soil. Not directly, 
the solar radiation, not the atmosphere, not the air, which warm up, but warm up the soil, and the soil and the lithosphere and the petosphere warm up the atmosphere. Okay, warm up are soil and atmosphere. But majority of Earth's surface, more exactly, 71% of Earth's surface, water. Ocean, lake, rivers. Therefore, evaporation increase. Evaporation, evaporation increase. In consequence of evaporation, made cloud surface. And the cloud surface is switch off the warming. This is a modeling. This is a model. Switch off. Stabilize the situation. Warming, 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 evaporation, minus because it's a shadow, the surface by clouds, and stop the warming. This is a model. It's a model. It's a modeling. An economist, not geographical model, but a similar model, made for function of global or local financial system and try to forecast the future. But in our case, not the modeling, the most important uh, strategy of the forecast of the future, but the time series analysis. The time series analysis. Because to the end of 19th century, a lot of statistical data aggregated in the statistical uh, uh, service and uh, the societies and so and so about production, about the price, about the uh, financial uh, production and so and so, a lot of lot of economic information. And the first generation of the statistical statistics and uh, and uh, economists try to describe a cycle. Which is the cycle? It's a repeating, moving in the different processes. And if somebody able to identify the cycle and a good instant by or so, able to earn a lot of money. Therefore, the first scholars and the first uh, um, uh, scholars who describe the uh, cycle were economists. The kitchen one, the kitchen was the first one who described one cycle, uh, three and four, four years, three and uh, half, uh, no, <laughs> 40 months, it's uh, between three and four years long cycle. The second one, a French scholar, Juglard, not Juglard, like a German, a French, Juglard, and the uh, last one, Kondrakev, Kondrakev uh, 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 identified the longest economic model between 40 and 60 years long uh, uh, cycle. But very interesting, the following generation of the historian adopted a cycle model. Uh, the first one, Ernst Slavus, a French uh, uh, historian on the time of, uh, of uh, Second World War, identified a 10 to 12 uh, uh, long cycle before a French Revolution. A French Revolution. When launched a French Revolution, this economic cycle turned down. Turned down. It's uh, uh, increased the tension on the society and the French economy. And the second one, which is very interesting, and I will speak a little bit about it, a secular cycle. Fernand Brodo, the most important historian of the 20th century, identified a long terms, a long cycle in the history, a secular, long, a lot of centuries long uh, cycle. It was a great innovation of that. Look at one uh, broader cycle, a secular cycle, about a cycle of world economic system. Uh, uh, broader used, there are different, a lot of different cycle theory. For example, uh, you know, I, I suppose you know the name of uh, Karl Marx, a philosopher and uh, economist of the uh, 19th century. And uh, uh, Karl Marx used this kind of a cycle. For Marx, this was one 
whole cycle. And on the, uh, on the books, he wrote that the capitalism is fall to the uh, tramp of the crisis time by time. He goes for them. This was the perspective. This was the perspective. But majority of economists used a basically different form of the cycle. Uh, uh, generally used form of the cycle working two phase, two phases of the cycle, A and the B phases. A and B. This is the A and this is the B. And for description of the cycle, necessary to know at least three information. The starting date, the turning date, and the closing date. If we are looking at history of world economy system, uh, Fernand Rodel identified four cycles. Look at short survey about it. A uh, secular cycle of world economy system. Cheers. <laughs> Necessary in my age, necessary to use some or something good. Uh, so, the first cycle started in the middle of 13th century. Why? Because Europe, to the middle of the 13th century, attained the level of overproduction. The European economy before the 14th century wasn't able produce surplus. And when huge quantity of surplus produced, started the trade between different regions. Later I will speak about. It. The turning point is the middle of the 14th century. This is the, uh, this is the period of black death. Probably you know, recently a lot of articles published uh, in the context of the, uh, of the epidemic situation about the 14th century crisis. It was the the greatest, the hugest uh, crisis all of the human history because in Europe, in the middle of the 14th century, lived 90 million, 90 million person and for seven, seven years died each third person, 30 million. The greatest human disaster, whole of the human, uh, in the Time span, the greatest human disaster, all of the human history. But very interesting, very interesting, it's unbelievable, huge human disaster, but this human disaster opened the way to the modernization. Why? Because each crisis able to open the gate, open the door for the future. And this situation later I will speak more about this problem, it's named a creative destruction. Each crisis produces opportunities. And the 14th century crisis opened the way, uh, destroyed the feudalism, destroyed the uh, structure of the feudalism, which constructed a small, separated, scattered uh, economic unit, and opened the way of European integration. Very high human price. Okay, the turning point is the great uh, subsistence crisis of Europe and the closing day the closing day is the beginning of the 16th century this is the age of geographical discoveries a European uh, conqu conquestors uh, everywhere to the direction of Africa uh, Asia and uh, and uh, and the Americas sail and start to colonize and construct the global training system. Good. The second cycle start when closed the first, and the turning point, the middle of the 17th century. Why? Because until the middle of the 17th century, the most important actors of the global trade are Mediterranean traders. Italian traders are um, uh, trader of Byzantine Empire, trader of Spain, and trader of Portugal. And this region, the Mediterranean region, down, and the Atlantic area, up. Therefore, the middle of the uh, 17th century, the great regional transformation area, and uh, the closing date is uh, uh, 1740, 
This is the dawn of industrial and the French political and social revolution. Look at the first, uh, first uh, cycle, third cycle, start when close the second. The turning point is much more exact in the time scale of Fenn and Rodo, uh, 1870. Uh, this is the closing years of the Napoleonian Wars. Why so important? Not only military history of Europe, much more, this is the milestone and the boundary of formation of the state. Before the French Revolution, a uh, most, most important logic of formation of the state, empire, under the direction of dynasties. Look at, for example, Hungary, Hungarian history. The first dynasty of Hungarian history, Hungarians founded the Christian state. But later, in the Hungarian king came from Luxembourg, Luxembourg dynasty, Anjou is a French, and Habsburg. And not, not a father. Therefore, it's not national state, empire. Empire. For example, very useful, look why kill one people to other. Until the 18th century, the most important reason killing one to other, religion. Religion. Look at, for example, uh, analyzed, uh, made a statistical big data analysis about Europe. How write down a geographical region of Europe? Until the end of 17th century, majority of historical documents wrote Christian law. Since the 18th century Europe, it's changed. Why so important? Because before a French Revolution, religion was the most important guiding force after national identity. And the basic logic of formation of the state, a nationalism, a nationalism. It's very important. Okay, look at the uh, closing date of the, of, the, of the third cycle. Uh, this is uh, 1896, because this was the last peaceful decade, last peaceful decade before the First World War. In the first decade of the 20th century, a lot of, lot of, I will load up the slides, of course, the, to the cold space, uh, but this was the last peaceful, peaceful uh, decade. And look at the last one. Uh, the first date, like the last date of the third, and the turning point, the middle of the 70s. Why? Because after the uh, Second World War, launched the greatest economic recovery whole of the human history. Unbelievable. Look at, for example, a uh, human dimension. If we are, we are looking at human history, uh, uh, for example, uh, 6,000 years before our country, in Africa lived 5,000 humans. On the starting date of Christian country, we approximately, because this is estimation, 200 or 300,000, no, 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 100 million, million inhabitants whole of the world. In 1820, we lived 1 million or billion, according to American English. In Closing date of uh, Second World War leave 2.5 million British English and 2,006 million and recently estimated 8 million. It's exponential growth unfolded. And uh, according to Rodol, the great, greatest economic di discovery is closed in the mid. This was the oil, oil crisis, if economists are uh, able to realize from the, uh, from the uh, economic terminology. Good. 
If we are looking at historical events, because uh, on the course we try to analyze the historical events, economic history, and so on and so, very important divide are different time categories. Sorry. But the first one, short term. How we can define the short term? Short term, a historical event which closed a shorter time than one year. This course unfold on the category of short term because we start in February and we will cl we'll close latest at the, at the beginning of July. It's unfold one even in the short term. The second category, a time de conjuncture in French term, medium term, it's one decade scale. For example, for example, your studies at the university unfold in the middle, medium term. And finally, some historical events, like for example, evolution of uh, world economy system, evolution of, uh, of uh, for example, Judaism, evolution of Christian or Muslim religion, we can describe only in long term, long durée, it's a French term. Okay, but, and this is the final uh, slide, if we are looking at uh, history of humankind, there are some processes which we can describe as linear, irreversible, and cumulative. The first one, a world population. This is the green line, green line, exponential, exponential process. Uh, world population. If we are looking at human history, uh, 6,000 years ago, 5,000, two uh, or 300, uh, 300 million, and uh, 1 million, 1.5, 6 and 8. My guess, according to your opinion, this kind of exponential growth will continue or not? Okay, you, we, we, we may use uh, democratical skills. Who vote? It's endlessly will continue the human uh, population growth. Rise the hand. One, two. Okay. And we travel to the Mars or the Moon or <laughs> everywhere on the universe. Okay? Who vote that will stop? Majority. Why? Why will stop the human growth? Uh, there won't be enough resources. Uh, resource problem. Scarcity. Scarcity? Um, I am deaf. Scarcity, yes. <laughs> Yes, it has a yeah. No, no, no. Somebody uh, recently about uh, a demographic transition. Demographic transition, no? Okay, it's a very important concept. The first time described in Europe. And very interesting, very interesting, the mechanism of demographic transition. If we are looking at uh, two key processes of human history, are uh, mortality and the fertility. If we, we, are, we are looking at human history in the modern time, in the traditional time, very high even the mortality and the fertility. Changed around 40 per thousand. 30 per thousand mean uh, for 1,000 person there is uh, uh, 40 births or 30 deaths. This is the traditional condition. It's a white is a mortality and the red one this is the fertility. In the traditional time, change the mortality around 40 per thousand and the fertility similarly. If fertility is higher, increase a little bit the population. If the mortality is higher, decrease a little bit the uh, But there is an imbalance. It's a traditional balance situation. But when start industrial revolution, not for only improving our capacity of agrarian production, much more important, the development of, uh, of a railway network. A railway network. Why? Because in the continental area, no other devices transport the surplus, the agrarian surplus, one place to other. Look at the traditional history. The greatest city located to the waterways, to the sea port, uh, to the 
lakeside like Stockholm to the Melar Melaren, uh, Lake Melaren, like Budapest, the capital of Hungary, uh, on the riverside of Danube, like uh, Paris, uh, the capital of France, uh, on the uh, on the on the uh, riverside of Seine, or Amsterdam uh, on the uh, North uh, Sea seaside. Why? Because before the railway network, no cheap version for bark trade. Bark trade. After appearance of railway network, everywhere very cheap manner able transport, barking, uh, meals, foods, everything. Therefore, a modernization and the railway network improved the food security. Food security. For example, in uh, somebody visited in uh, Odessa, Odessa, recently part of Ukraine, uh, I, I am not able to forecast it's possible next week is a real part of Russia. But very interesting, Odessa. I visited in Odessa, uh, and the uh, whole of the harbor, whole of the port covered, covered the walking part of the of the harbor, covered the rock the stones of Vesuv, volcano of Italy, near to Naples. You know, Vesuv, it's a volcano. Why? Because when exported a Ukrainian grain to Mediterranean country, uh, vessels, uh, ships, it's transported huge quantity of grain, but came back empty. Therefore, one talented Russian uh, trader decided so good feeling walking on Odessa on Vesuv stones. There were imported huge quantity of Vesuv. It's very Russian. There is a Russian student somewhere. Okay. <laughs> uh, you visited in Odessa? No. no. Very, very interesting, very rich, very rich city of uh, Russian history. Uh, okay. Uh, therefore, our uh, industrial revolution improved the security. Uh, food security decreased the mortality, decreased the mortality, but the fertility left very high. Why? Because in the peasant society, a traditional peasant society, very important the strength and the working power of children. Eight years, I, I came from the peasant society, I know it. I, I was eight years old when I was a shepherd. Uh, of uh, our uh, household, and uh, <laughs> but my mother was very nervous because uh, I uh, spoke with the cattle one and two hours <laughs> because I have a lot of problems and necessary to discuss somebody who save my secrets. Okay, but turn back to the story. Uh, the fertility left very high, the mortality decreased. After some period, the mortality received the 15 per thousand and after some time decrease the fertility even. Why? Because increase the urban population and the life strategies in urban area basically different. Necessary to learn elementary school, it's mandatory, secondary school, university. Therefore, the children transform a working from working power too expensive, very expensive investment. And moreover, in the traditional time, a proportion of infantile mortality, 50% for one adult necessary to birth, over, over, uh, uh, overperformed, therefore, the fertility. And finally, uh, stabilized a uh, fertility in 15 level. Two steady phases, a traditional balance and the modern balance situation, and we can uh, set divide four phases. A traditional phases when quite balanced fertility and the mortality. The second phases which generation by generation more numerous increase the number and the third, when increase the population, but the number of generation, following generation, decreased, 
and the final, the fourth, this is a model. This is a model. Why so important the model? Because taking the model to the real situation, the differences, with help of differences, for example, trajectory of Africa, trajectory of Africa. In the trajectory of Africa, in the second and third phases, much smaller the population growth. Why? In consequence of uh, civil wars, partly and partly the epidemics, like AIDS, like uh, Ebola, like others. Okay, uh, why so important? Because if one traditional society passing through the demographical trans transformation uh, decrease decrease the productivity. Okay, uh, expire the time. We will continue with this slide, and uh, I. I